Here we go. All right, so we see... Uh, the, yeah, see the cards. See a ribbon spread of cards. There's an ace here. There's an ace here. There's an ace here. There's an ace here. No other aces in the deck. This is uh, Andre's uh, deck that, that I just that I just picked up off the table. Now I'm going to do this. I think we would all agree that this is a riffle shuffle. None of that fancy push through or zero stuff for me. That's a riffle shuffle. That's another riffle shuffle. And here's something you can't do with a stripper deck. You can't turn half of them around and shuffle them together like that. You know, that's a riffle shuffle. I don't know where in the deck those aces are now. And I, I really don't. I have no idea where they are. Except that they're all right there. Now then. That's not a magic trick. That's just a demo for those of you sitting at home. I would never do that for a lay audience because I think they would in initially suspect the deck. But instead of spreading them out and saying, ta-da, I'm smarter than you, what if I had just blended that into a, a series of cuts, false cuts, and then one last shuffle? And now I've got my four aces on top of the deck. I'm ready to go with any trick in magic that requires four aces on top of the deck. That's the power of Sub Rosa, is that I eliminated the call. Well, actually, I didn't eliminate it. I, I did a call of a sort, but with a completely different technique. I, you know, I still got my four aces to the top, which is what a call achieves. But I did it with a technique that um, you just can't achieve any other way. So that's one of the uh, one of the powerful things, in my opinion, of Sub Rosa.